Man, these people are sure in a hurry to get somewhere. Don't you know, Diesel? It's the Fast Car Final Race today. People are on their way to root for their Fast Car heroes. I hear it's a tight one this year, too. Is that today? Man, I'm gonna miss it. Lefty Turner and his number five and a half car are gonna take it all. Woo-wee! <laughs> Fast car, baby. Well, Diesel, all of these folks have the same enthusiasm about getting to the racetrack. Sometimes this affects the way they drive. Look out! Jeez! Did you see that? That SUV nearly became someone's hood ornament. Don't they know the dangers of cutting someone off? Sadly, Diesel, many people don't take notice of what's called space management. Space management, huh? Is that like personal space? I hate it when people get too close when they're talking. Or maybe it's the guy that sits right next to you when there are a ton of other seats available. Well, kind of, Diesel, but I'm talking more about the proper following and stopping distances that are essential to the safe operation of trucks on the road. It's the responsibility of every professional truck driver. Uh, yeah, sure, I, I knew that. But uh, keep talking. Tell me more. Okay, well, now is a great time. Sure, but these folks are making me nervous. Mind if we pull over? Great idea, Diesel. Let's go get a view of the fast car racetrack from that hill over there. We can watch the race and talk about the importance of following and stopping distances. Sure, but if these folks don't watch where they're going, they may not make it. Hoo-hoo, yeah! Lefty's gonna take it to them today! I can't wait for them to get started! Wish we were down there in Monkey Wrench Alley right now! Okay, just made it before the start. So let's take a look at the way those cars are lined up down there. Do you see that, Diesel? Uh-oh, Lefty qualified eight, so he's got some ground to make up. Right, but see how all the cars are spaced out within the pace lap? See how they are in two columns with some room between them? Right, that's gonna change real soon, though. You're right, as soon as they get to the first turn. But think about if you were down there right now in our rig with other drivers and other rigs. That amount of space or less on the racetrack may be considered acceptable, but on the road, it's not. A constant challenge to a professional truck driver is having their rig under control at all times in all situations. Having sufficient space around their vehicle is essential. Yes, sir. And one of the ways to do this is with the visual search. Hmm. Hmm. You bet. A key part of safe driving is to keep proper distances between you and other vehicles in front, back, and to either side of you. By maintaining the proper following distance, for example, you can lessen the chance of a rear-end collision. You also keep yourself on schedule, reduce insurance premiums, maintain an accident-free driving record, save fuel, and get home safely. But those drivers down there aren't concerned about safe following distances. They're going to be swapping paint in about five minutes. Let me tell you, Diesel, this is the perfect setting to see the effects of speed on space management and the potential consequences of not maintaining a cushion of space around your rig. What do you mean? Diesel, those fast car drivers may run in circles and at much faster speeds, but the concepts are the same. And they're off! <laughs> Good, perfect example. Look at the drivers as they go through a turn. See all of the jockeying for position? They seem to be moving in unison. Part of that is because they're using the visual search, so they know where their car is in relation to others. You see, the fast car folks are trying to keep an imaginary cushion of air around the vehicle at all times. But at those speeds and during a race, it's hard to do that. Go, Lefty, go! Sorry, I'm, I'm still listening. So we should treat our rigs on the road like fast cars? I can do that. I'm putting a five and a half on the side of the rig. Diesel, I hope you're getting the point. Knowing how much space around your vehicle you have, what might be in that space, and how fast you're going, will impact the decisions you make and the actions you take when moving your rig through traffic. So, like the visual search, space management is a constant process. As a driver, I might need to take action if there's something in the road, or if someone cuts me off, like that guy earlier or if something went wrong mechanically with a vehicle in front of me, or with my rig. Precisely, Diesel. You want to give yourself plenty of time and room to react and respond to tough situations. 
You do that by making sure you're aware of the space around your rig and what's in it. Road conditions can vary. On the open road, you must keep an eye out for traffic on all sides of your rig, moving at your rig's speed or faster. Well, what about in the city? In the city, there are even more things to be aware of in addition to other traffic. School zones, darting children, and neighborhood driveways, both private and commercial. Okay, now here's something to think about in terms of space management. What if you're in traffic and you're surrounded by vehicles on all four sides? That has happened to me before. So, what should you do? When you're in this position, there are five vehicles we talked about in visual search. Oh yeah, you need to control traffic in front of you, to the right and left of you, and behind you, as well as your own vehicle. You do this by slowing down and increasing the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, while also allowing the vehicles beside and behind you to pass on by. And remember, Diesel, the most vital factor is the person sitting behind your rig's steering wheel. Slow down? That's something these guys seldom do. Wow! See that red car? Really a howling heat. That big V8 sucking air. Yikes! And that number seven car just blew a tire in front of him. Uh-oh. Wonder how he's gonna get around that. Following that closely, it's gonna be... Oh no! Spinning out of control and heading for the infield. The guy's gonna be lucky to get out in one piece. Uh-oh. Look, he's climbing out. Looks like the engine may be in flames. He's lucky they're not carting him out of there in a medevac. Yes, he's very lucky. And it's time to talk about following distances, because that's exactly how that last crash happened. All right, following distances. Is that about trying not to tailgate? Uh, it's a little different than avoiding tailgating, Diesel. There are different considerations and different formulas used to determine the proper amount of following distance. Some calculated in terms of perception, reaction, and brake time. Three quarters of a second for you to perceive or recognize the hazard requiring you to stop. Three quarters of a second to react once you recognize the hazard. And five and a half seconds for the brakes to actually stop the vehicle once pressure has been applied. That's if the road is dry and even and your brakes are good. In total, it takes about seven seconds in the best of conditions to stop your rig at 55 miles per hour. That's about 350 feet, or a little longer than the length of a football field. Other conditions can affect actual stopping distance. These are your vehicle size, height, and weight, the type of load you're hauling, the condition of the brakes, tire type, size, and pressure, your vehicle's speed, weather, and road conditions, and how alert you are make a difference too. Are there other ways to calculate following distances? Another often used formula is, for every 10 feet of vehicle length, allow one second of following distance if you're traveling below 40 miles an hour. 40 miles per hour? Who drives 40 miles per hour on the highway? We're using it as a baseline in our example. Oh, right. And the rig is... Uh, let me do the math. Okay, let's say a rig is 60 feet long. That means you'll need six seconds of following distance when traveling below 40 miles per hour, right? Good job, Diesel. So based on what we know so far, how far do you travel in a second? Ah, I, uh, mm, I don't know. Here's a good way to figure a second of following distance. Pinpoint a stationary object ahead, like a mile marker. Then when the vehicle in front of you passes that point, begin counting. 1 1,000, 2 1,000, and you should reach 6 1,000 before your front bumper reaches that mile marker. If you didn't, you're following too closely. Professional driving schools call it the six second rule. Okay, six seconds for speeds under 40 miles per hour. So, what if I'm running faster than 40 miles per hour? How much following distance for say 60 miles per hour? For speeds above 40 miles per hour, add a second. That means at least a seven second following distance if you're running at 55 to 60 miles per hour. And if the weather is bad, add another second. If the roads are slick from rain, add another second. Ice, two seconds. And if you're running at night, add yet another second. Okay, I got that. What else? Let's see if you really got it, Diesel. 
What if you're running at 60 miles per hour? It's after midnight, it's raining, and there's some light fog. What would your following distance be then? Uh, add one there, uh, another one there. Okay, I'm thinking a safe following distance out of those conditions would be at least 10 seconds. Is that even close? Right on the money, Diesel. Way to go. And these calculations should become second nature. Yeah, you need to know them by heart. You can say that. Ah, oh, forget it. Just a few more things about space management following and stopping distances. Bring it on. I'm all ears. Be aware also of things happening in front of you, such as brake lights coming on, day or night. This may mean an emergency ahead, or just vehicles slowing or stopping. At night, there are added distractions. More distractions? <laughs> like what? Well, like this. When lights from other sources on the sides of the road, such as street lights, house lights, and businesses, blend in with lights from oncoming traffic and traffic you're following. We call these areas of confusion. Wow, that would be very confusing on the racetrack. Here's another distraction. Don't forget about tailgaters. Yeah, they're the folks who picnic before football games, right? Not that kind of tailgater, Diesel. I'm talking about the drivers who follow too closely. Oh, yeah, those tailgaters. And you can slow gradually to let them pass, like we do when we're controlling the five vehicles around us but never tap your brakes, brake hard, or speed up because they'll stay right behind you. Best if you slow and let them go. Check. Slow down. Do it gradually and let them pass. Got it. So what about stopping distances? Okay, pay attention. If you're traveling 55 miles per hour, it's gonna take you just about 350 feet to stop your rig. As I said before, that includes the time it takes you to decide to stop, what we call perception time. It also includes your physical reaction time and your rig's brake lag time. That's a lot to think about. Okay, but what's brake lag time? Brake lag time is the time it takes for the air in the truck's air brake system to get through the lines to the brake chambers after the brake pedal is applied. And we haven't included other factors, such as the weight of your load, the road conditions, and the condition of your braking system. Man, this sounds serious. You bet it is. You also need to know that stopping distances for four-wheelers are different, about 20 to 30 percent less, basically about 275 feet if the car is traveling 55 miles per hour. That's important to know, because if traffic stops ahead, the car in front of you will stop sooner than you. You'll need to leave enough distance between your rig and the car to accommodate the difference in stopping distance. So, tell me again, how long do you think all that other stuff takes? Your perception, your reflexes to put on the brakes and the rig's brake lag time. Seven seconds, and it could be more. The point is this, it takes time to stop a rig, too much time to be following bumper to bumper, and too much time to risk harming yourself or other people. Hmm, unless you're a fast car driver, do you realize how much money those guys rake in if they win a race? Diesel, what I'm talking about is more important than money. We're talking about keeping you safe on the highway and keeping others safe as well, even those drivers who insist on traveling in your space. I'm all about safety and getting home in one piece. But watch number 32. Did you see him give car number 18 a little bump? The nerve of that guy! Well, it's a pivotal race, and it looks like a dogfight from here to the checkered flag. I like the way you rule, brother. Just making sure you make it home safely every night. What do you say? Let's get down to the winter circle in time for the half dance. Uh, wait a minute. I do most of my dancing with the ladies. Diesel, I'm talking about when the winning team goes through victory lane wearing the sponsor's caps. It's for the press. I knew that. Just testing. <laughs> Yeah, right. Let's go. Just remember, keep your distance, be ready, be buckled, and be safe.